Yeah, good Fred or anybody want to say anything about the program so far? And what are your, your uh, observations? Um, hello everyone. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. In fact, I, I am able to present a, a speech, a very short speech here to the interns. Actually, uh, I'll not go into details what um, I'm to inform the interns about, but for now, what I would like to say is that uh, I think this program is very, very important. And so far, we've, we've been able to realize how much um, we need to educate, especially um, young people like us to try to get their attention on this sort of project. Uh, so far, after interacting with most of the agents, it's been amazing. Um, this, is, this is something that should have been going on, uh, I think, a year or two years ago. And it's only good that we started rolling, rolling out a program like this. So I think it's amazing. It's very interesting. Understanding how people think from different countries, you know, coming from different backgrounds, learning how to work with um, one another, especially with the time difference. You know, in India, India is uh, six hours ahead of Ghana, right? And you, you have to learn how to cope with some of these challenges. So I've seen that personally, I've observed that interns are learning how to work with one another, especially also, especially in uh, languages, right? Uh, how to understand each other better, speaking. So I have, I have um, in, my, in my group, I have some of them complaining. I, I can hear this person when she's talking. I'm like, hey, take your time. Just exercise patience and then listen carefully. You're learning. It's a learning process. So I've seen that interns are learning how to work well with one another, even even virtually, whilst being in other countries. So it's a very interesting program, and I'm really looking forward to this particular project becoming a very successful one, and then to be able to build on others as, as we go by. So this will be what I would say for now. It's very interesting. I'm personally enjoying this whole project. Thank you for your positivity as usual, good Fred. But no, no harm if you have there is. A, in area for improvement. And is it, we know that the really first program, as I said before, we tried to do something before COVID with Remley and other people, but we couldn't uh, because of COVID and so on. I think Khadija is having uh, her hand up. Khadija. Khadija, the sound sound uh, maybe you can change your place or bring the phone near you. Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Good evening to everyone. Yeah, I'm Hadija Mtesiwase from Rwanda, a university. Um, so, so far the program is really meaningful. Personally, it is helping me. Um, and also I like the part of teamwork, like the way we are working together as a team. And I hope that if you continue like this, we can achieve like tremendous things that we have never even imagined. Um, so the area of improvement, it's not even the area of improvement, it communication in advance. Uh, I think when we know who is last and which is the next for better preparation, like as you suggested, the two groups will be presenting like each session. So it can be good if I come and knowing that maybe group team four and team three or team two and team one are presenting today. And I come prepared, like knowing that this one is going to present about this and this. Yeah, that was just my observation. Thank you. Okay, thanks Khadija, thank you. And we know that uh, there is lots of short shortages that we need to uh, learn from, but just for information, I'm not sure you know, all of you know or not, and this program is run uh, not by staff, and we don't have staff, actually staff, and except one secretary in our society in Bahrain, uh, uh, run by people like Paul Ramli and uh, 
good friend and they are also people like you and for sure they want your feedback so that we can improve and in the future anyway you're gonna run this program and we hope that this first cohort will be the leaders of the future inspiration economy where you can uh, be one day in uh, like me in Ghana second day you might be in Mauritania third day in uh, India we've been dreaming about this and we hope inshallah this become uh, you know a, a success story uh, and if not all of you at least you know uh, some of you or all of um, a majority of you uh, beside uh, you know we are, we are depending also on the academic program which is uh, every time maybe I'll just explain about it because I want to encourage you to go into this program once it, once it is uh, approved in your country like in uh, Rwanda we are uh, now in, in a good stage with the uh, uh, you know Rwanda University and also we're trying to open our own university in Rwanda uh, like in uh, Sudan, we already have, uh, we are there and so on. So I hope in the ne next in India, but at least you are ready for this, you know, this movement, because this movement will come up, pick up in the next 10 years, I'm sure. You'll see it a lot in trends and so on. It is now we are intentionally quiet also, uh, because we want to do lots of models. And one of the models will come from you. And we have done, my, I, my personally, I have done more than 300 models so far since uh, 2015. But it uh, also, uh, whatever come from other people, it was what makes a difference because it means it is generic. It can be done by others, not oh, by only Dr. Bohiji, maybe he's clever, maybe he have money, uh, something like this. Everybody will say something, you know? So thanks a lot again. Okay. So uh, today, shall I see the schedule that we have today? Yes, please. Uh, so yeah, and uh, so until uh, nine forty uh, five, uh, like uh, for five minutes more, like because we're already running behind the schedule. Okay. So so if you may say a few words, and then we'll go on to Doctor Dunya. Then we have uh, a small speech by Godfrey, and then trying uh, a few things, and then we are assigning uh, 15, 15 minutes to each uh, each teams. Uh, so we'll go from team three, team one, team four, and uh, then team two. And uh, later we'll be taking feedback from you uh, and uh, Dr. Dunya for 15 minutes. And then we'll have a question answer session for the interns for 10 minutes. Okay, but I have a disclaimer here and we cannot give you feedback uh, unless we see the presentation and study it. Yes, and we, I told good Fred, we need, uh, even okay. though we did a rough evaluation for the first week, Still, we yes, need sir. your PowerPoint and so on, so that we, because you know, also that was our interruptions. I think one team mm -hmm. even didn't present one of the presentations or something like this. So I yes. think the presentation will be our uh, real, uh, you know, feedback. We'll, we'll write inside the PowerPoint our comments. Okay. This is the way we do it yeah, usually, which is easier right. for us. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now I, I okay. let me present for you only uh, uh, one or two slides, and then we uh, give it back to you. This slide is from our program our academic programs. And uh, I wanted to tell you, and what we are trying to do with you in, sh in this short period is like condensed of what you are trying to do in a complete program for a master or a PhD or, uh, you know, or a diploma, uh, postgraduate diploma, uh, you know, program and so on. So what we are trying to, uh, to do, and either we bring from you disruptive leaders, which is means they disrupt the norm. You know what means disruptive? From disruptive innovation and disruptive thinkers, which is they come, they call them the outliers. They are means they don't think the similar people, the, the normal people. They see the hidden opportunities inside the communities, inside their, their uh, organization, inside their country, and start to work on it. Or we can bring from you professional, hopefully, you know, inspiration economy experts, engineers, uh, and so on. Or at least we, we have, like inspiring entrepreneurs, like in Godfrey, for example, he's a clearly inspiring inter entrepreneur. I told him, but there is a difference between being social entrepreneur or entrepreneur or inspiring inter entrepreneur. Where here, we, we, they work for reviving the community, the gauge, the measurement, that they're going to be measured in front of uh, the world after they leave this world or uh, their success factor is not how much money they make or not so how much product even they sell. Okay, it is about how much uh, they manage to change the communities, change their paradigm, they change their attitudes, behaviors. At the same time, they made a business 
that employed other people. Okay. So in order to reach this stage, as you can see, we, we uh, and they become future foresighters. I mean, they, they can see the future much better than others. Okay. In order to see this thing, then we need to uh, really work on the field. So, so far, I think the exercises that is given by uh, Paul and by Godfrey and by uh, Ramli also, in collaboration with Ramli, is that they are trying to prepare you for this stage. Okay, uh, the stage of the field, because the real matter, you might do very good in, the, in the, this assignment and teamwork, and you get to know each other, you build network, which is very important. This is what is the excitement of Godfrey and even me. But the most more important is that how, what you need to the field. You should always ask what I need to the field because the field is the most important expert you're gonna learn from. The field is your friend. It is the one that is really uh, more important than me even, which is I'm the founder of this concept. Because from the field, you're gonna learn what really, uh, who you are, what is your life, uh, you know, journey will, would be look like the more you work on the field. For that, it is very important that you know, and we want you to be multidisciplinary in your thinking. Means don't think only from, for example, uh, engineer point of view, or some of you is working or studying legal, for example, or art or studying, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, other academic uh, things, uh, you know, like uh, architect or something like this. Think always multidisciplinary means try to see it from different perspectives. Uh, become like a doctor sometime, become like engineer, become I. And I say, okay, how can I come? Because I'm not there, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a doctor. This is where you, this is the field will teach you. Will teach you and how to solve a problem and you take into consideration the safety matter. You, you take into consideration the design matter. You take into consideration the testing matter. Okay, the more you are in the field. And, and by the way, Yani, I think our upload is uh, huge. Okay, we don't have much followers so far anyway, because we are thinkers. But yani, it's good for our, for our number. Now we have more than 1,000, I think uh, 300, 400 followers. But what matters is the content of the, that we are putting in the, in the, because everything we record, as you can see now, we record every visit, we record every project, field projects also what we do and so on. So try to benefit from that as much as you can, uh, inshallah. The other thing is that you might, some of you might be a social for profit uh, graduate, and the world needs that. As you can see, the world, as I told you in the first meeting, the world today is becoming selfish. Inspiration is becoming more, yani this is the worst uh, level of uh, capital economy. Inspiration economy in the total opposite side of this. We are saying you can, you must, everybody have to be, uh, to be selfish a little bit, but if you want to be more humble and you can see the world better, you have to become selfless. And this is where the social for profit can help you in doing that. So how you can make profit in the same time that you live on, not to be rich from, not necessarily. And you can be rich from if, if you have certain maybe innovative technique. But the most important is that you make other communities revive. Other communities come out of their, you know, uh, vicious cycle of poverty or other problems or family instabilities and so on. And the last point that I want to conclude with, if you, if you don't learn anything from this internship, the minimal I expect, and I hope that you expect also, is that you become problem solvers, not for uh, mathematics, not for engineering, no, for the world. You can see the now, the problems of the world with different eyes, okay? And you can see where are inside the, every challenge, there are lots of opportunities. This is, I hope that is, what we are targeting with you, yani, to do with you in the end of the day. I'm not sure if Dr. Dunia, uh, we can give her a chance also. Do you want to comment? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think you've covered uh, most of the thing. Maybe I will um, cover at the end. Okay. okay. All right, so. Uh, so, God, uh, Godfrey, would you like to say a few words? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, please. All right. Am I audible? Yes, yes. All right. So, hello, everyone. Um, good evening to you all. Good evening to you, Dr. Mohiji, and good evening to you, Dr. Dina. Always, I'm always happy to 
and on how to you for being an inspiration to me personally. And I'm also happy to to have uh, our dear interns with us today again. I can't understand you. Can, can you hear me? There is sound background uh, noise uh, on the background. I think it should be on is it okay? And there is a little bit of background noise actually. I'm I'm really sorry. I, I had to I had to rush to um, a, a location to have access to good internet and unfortunately over here there's a lot of noise. So if you guys can cope. So you are mute, I guess. So you so so after I'm, I'm done I'm made to mute. I, I know the situation in Ghana and you're where you are. Just bring the, um, the telephone near your mouth, please. Ashan, we can hear you more. Okay, okay. Is it okay now? Not yet. Hello, is it okay? Okay, raise your voice. Son. Okay, all right. It is, I, have to, I have to shout a bit. Is it okay? Go ahead. All right, so thank you all and then welcome to today's Zoom meeting. Um, this message goes out to all interns. As always, we are always happy to have you guys. And I tell you myself, Paul and Rimley, we are always excited talking backstage about how successful um, this project is going to end up. All we want you to know is that we are happy and excited working with you and we hope that you are learning um, whatever you want to learn, and we also hope to teach you whatever knowledge that we have. All we are going to ask of you is that you should continue to be very punctual to the meetings and stay committed, okay? Stay committed. When it's time for the attendance, please, let, we are still using the 10 minutes. Ten, we have the 10 minutes range. Try to mark yourself within the 10 minutes range. We are always looking out for commitment, okay? Some of you are not really showing that if you're going to mark uh, some of you are going to be below the mask. So please, you know, we understand the situation in other countries. Uh, I, I know it's midnight in India right now, but then please still try to show the little commitment you can and then dedicate yourself to the task that is given. Try to submit your work and assignment. And then also, you know, try to involve yourself in the assignments that are given. These assignments, it's, it's not to test your intelligence, but then we want to know how you'll be able to work with one another from other countries, okay? Considering the time zones, the language barrier and everything, we still believe as young people of the world, we have that ability to break this sort of restrictions. So please try your best to stay committed and then um, and let's enjoy the ride. So this is what I'd like to say for now. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Godfrey. And uh, Paul, would you like to say a few words? Uh, good evening, Dr. Vuezi and Dr. Dunia, and good evening, team leaders and interns. Well, uh, I just want to inform and convey this message. Attendance is very important for all of you in order for you to continue with the program. Giving your attendance in between 9 to 9, 10 p.m. Indian time is necessary. Otherwise, you will be marked absent, and this will affect your continuation of the program. It has also been seen the most of you wait till Thursday to complete your assignments. It is notified to you now that you need to complete it and submit it on Wednesday night and assignment submitted on Thursday won't be accepted. That's it. Thank you. All the best. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so now uh, we are going to begin with our presentations. So first we have team three. So uh, from team three, Sumaya will be uh, presenting and I'll be doing the screen share. Sumaya, you may begin. Okay, um, good evening everyone from this part of the world. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Sumaya Abubakar, presenting for Team 3. And this project, or this assignment, is about Nahda. Nahda literally means rise up, to boom, to get up, literally, according to um, the phonology of the language. 
But this project's men's, uh, main idea or notion is to eradicate poverty, unemployment, and family disintegration. Next slide. Um, project of eradicate to eradicate poverty, unemployment, and family disintegration. If you people are coming from my own part of the world, especially Nigeria, we have the first-hand knowledge on what poverty is, what family disintegration is, high rate of divorce, all is tilted down to poverty. They are development projects established on cooperation between International Institute of uh, Inspiration Economy and the National Lovers Association in the Casablanca district of Mauritania. This is telling us how far the triple IE have gone into in intervention on poverty eradication using the case study of Casablanca in Mauritania and what they did and how they've improved and touched lives. Uh, though the project have stopped, have ended around 2019 with two projects as the seat of good fishing and the creative generation project of sewing workers. Next slide. Uh, what's the aim of NAHDA? Everybody will have to ask this question. What's the aim? The aim is to provide sustainable jobs that will reduce unemployment and poverty. If poverty is reduced, uh, there will be blockchain of employment that is one um, empowerment for youths, which are the backbone for women, especially because they carry the burden of sustenance, they carry the burden of the family, the children. So if poverty is eradicated, women's um, so life will, will be improved, the standard of living will be enhanced and reintegrate broken families. Um, I think if I, if I got it correctly, Al Jazeera have stated that Nigeria as a case study have Hausa tribe, have the highest or the ranked second in the world due to, due to divorce. Why do we have that rate? Because 80% of poverty rate in Nigeria, for example, is dominated in the middle, uh, in the Northern part of Nigeria. And why do we have broken homes? It's because this poverty is high and due to this highness in poverty, marriages are dissolving, they're disintegrating. This really is a first-hand information about what poverty really does and more to do about uh, empowerment. And these are pictures of uh, the members who have gained skills acquisition and are successful and the target group were women and youths and most of them have success rate of 35%. What is it achieved till now? raising the family stability rate. I give you an example of what's happening in Nigeria, especially the Northern part of Nigeria, whereby due to poverty, a lot of families are disintegrating. If poverty is eradicated, even if it's not all, we will have a rising, that's the rising in family stability. The rate of divorce will be low in the society. Numbers of children going to school will increase because the living expenses is, have decreased and there will be more um, many that will send the children to school. Spreading the spirit of solidarity and brotherhood among the continent of Mauritanian society, that's what it has enhanced, changing the mentality of the beneficiary society from dependence to productive. This most yeah, important. Sure, yeah. The most important aspect is how can people now shift? How can we have a paradigm shift from dependency to productivity? How can we channel the mind from being dependent mind, being dependent thinking into being productive and creative mindset, which is really important. Um, most of those women that have been trained are uh, trained into making soap, dairy, couscous, clothes, school bags, and selling cosmetics materials, this is what they do. And they form cooperatives, which is really interesting and really nice. And also profit, there is profit margin, average profit margin. It really won't be expensive because it will be consumed locally by the local market. These are the samples of their products. For those who have made soap, this is the sample and the bath So how will they market this product? This market, the way they do market the product is that they are sold in the neighborhood and local market. And most of the customers are young people, women, and the general public because it's soap that everybody needs in the house to wash, to, to do a lot of things. And some of them are even sold um, to large shops, maybe a bigger one. 
what more can be achieved from this project? A lot can be achieved. Um, what's um, the, the main aim, as we've said earlier, is poverty eradication, creation of productive and cohesive society, and access to greater success rates. Um, how IIE is aiding the cooperatives, that the continuity and development of service, we talk about that sustainability in another word, provision of experience and staff, most of people are not aware and they don't have the capacity. So having these experiences building their capacity. Um, the presence of sufficient support, yes, at least someone is there to sign by, someone is there as a lifeline to support you to achieve this. Then being the think tank and providing financial support. Financial support down here is the most important language and uh, what's really needed. A lot of finances are needed. Challenges faced by Nahda. One of the most prominent challenges is the dependent nature of the beneficiary society. Yes, most of where poverty is high, you will see the rate of dependency is extremely high. Low awareness, people are not aware and are not enlightened about these things. So as the, these things is happening, probably first project, second project, a lot of people will be aware and a lot of people will now, living standard will be extended. Post-COVID economy circumstances in the early, in the early years of foundation. Way forward for Nahda. Engagement of Nahda with the world should be increased. Yes, that me. we need publicity, we need visibility, we need awareness. All this via social media handles should really be there. How can we inspire others? This by showing it to the world, by using social media for campaign hashtags, will now tell the world what we do and inspire people to even do more or contribute little by little. It also makes you have trust to gain trust from others, which is confidence building also. It builds your confidence. It enhances social cohesion for those living in divided and segregated communities. Marketing, these goods should be markets, enterprises, all this, the products, they are good manufactured to meet the needs of people within the locality. So they are having a, a solution driven um, process for their locality and also giving them back money. The brand, brand is simply a term whereby you can differentiate between what you do and what you don't know. By brand, you are telling people who you are and even selling your idea. Um, let us know. I think that's the end of this, the, this, this, this slide. Hello? Um, this, is, this is one of the interviews that we have done. Mm. For the beneficiaries. These are interviews for the beneficiaries, actually. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Masha Thank Allah. you so much. I, yes, and uh, I think this is, there is a child there. So always women is struggling with different roles. So yeah, I need, you get like an extra bonus always woman when you are uh, having uh, more roles and still you are doing the work. Maybe Dr. Bahaji will not like my comment, but I'm always supportive for you, Annie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, now we uh, we have another another PPT presentation. No, let me just comment on this, uh, yes. Ramli, because yes, uh, yes. Yani, I don't know. I, I hope you are not asking me to judge this uh, project because this is one of the dearest projects that I have done. So I'll be very biased. And I consider it, frank, frankly, it is the Rolls Royce of our, all of our project. Yani, we did many projects, as I told, more than 300. And if I count in detail, maybe 600. But the real projects that is... Um, uh, we started to work uh, more of uh, vertical than horizontal. You know the difference. I am I am horizontal thinker. Means I I do models and I I do uh, different countries. Then I bring uh, from it as a thinker. What is the generic thing? But in this country, in this village, in this neighborhood specifically, which is called uh, Dar al Bayda, to correct the name because uh, Casablanca is in uh, Morocco. Actually, I corrected this presentation. This family was angry with me. 
for that, but uh, uh, because there was uh, the different in the name also, because the name they are not uh, lovers association. They are called Muhabbul Watan. It's different. Okay, those who love their their countries, but uh, you know it's, it was a rough uh, you know translation. Usually, you know the names should not be translated anyway. But uh, that's yeah. maybe was yes. a, anyway. That's one issue. But I wanted to correct uh, some information that Sumaya said, maybe because of her uh, limited knowledge or because of the knowledge of the person who given also the, this project, it's true, started in 2019. And it was started only in end of 2019, actually before, before COVID in five months, exactly. And COVID started, to, we started to realize COVID impact in uh, February, even though it started in December officially. But we started this project approximately in August. I was there in August in this country. And it was my second visit, actually. And I failed in the first visit to see people who are honest. And this is maybe one of the problems that Sumaya is trying to tell you about. In you know, Africa, sub-Saharan countries, they have a problem. And this is what I told uh, uh, Paul and so on. And we, we need people like, inshallah, future leaders like Sumaya that we trust. I, for example, I couldn't go to Nigeria because of uh, trust, lack of trust, beside like, lack of security and so on. So inshallah, we hope people like leaders like Sumaya, she collect people uh, you know, around here and we, they make for us a program and we come. But uh, the number two, this project is still alive, Sumaya, it's very important. I think I understood from you and it is like it's finished. No, it is, did not finish. This project actually will stay and will never finish, inshallah, as long as I am alive and I hope, inshallah, you take it over because you are now you are the people who will carry my, my message, inshallah, to the world. Till we make, eradicate, uh, eliminate poverty in this village. But why? We want to prove to the whole world in we people can do something with minimal money, not in millions, not in hundreds of thousands, and just few hundreds or maybe thousands of dollars, we can eliminate poverty. Okay, and this is a good example of that, what we are doing there, because we are spending, as you can see down now, even the challenge for you, we don't spend more than $300 per co-op. Co and each co-op have 45 women. They start, maybe they come later to maybe 35 with time, some people they leave or something like this, or, or they shift to another villages or another neighbor. That's uh, this one fact. Second, this is very important for you. Amash, I'm taking a long time, uh, Remly, because this is very important. And this is a project that you can, you know, make analogy, you know, analogical thinking, what means? Do you all know, know what means analogical think, thinking? It means, uh, so, no. means you. you can copy and or take something, uh, you know, when you do your project, you can be having this like a reference, okay? This is the a project I would like you to look for when you do in your community. All your communities, maybe they are not as much poor as they are here or like in Nigeria or Tashad or these countries, which is the worst, yani, poverty in the world. They are, yani, these countries are the worst in the world because they are living in 0.5 dollar. And the United Nations, uh, now, now this year, they are saying three dollar. So see, you can see the gap. India now, they barely made people uh, go beyond 1.9 uh, dollar, for example. Okay, in certain countries they passed, you know, like China, their poverty is uh, above two dollar, okay? So a different country, but this country is, they are 0.5 dollar, if they find, they will be lucky also. Many people, they don't find even 0.5 dollar, yeah, the majority I'm talking about the, the country. And especially in this area, this is the poorest of that, that poor uh, country. Beside the corruption, which is very huge, okay? So you can imagine the corruption, even in the people lifestyle. People, they marry a lot and they divorce. There is a lot of divorced women. So for that, this project we have with it, uh, a family stability program. It means a requirement that these ladies, they attend uh, uh, women education, minimal. I'm not talking about they will, We'll take them, no, just, we call it the minimal, okay? Education, they, need, they know how to read and write in their Arabic language, because these people, they speak Arabic, the, the main reference. They know how to, uh, you know, calculate one plus uh, 10, uh, t like this, so that they cancel, okay? And then they know how to run the business. Now, this is part one of the family stability. And we, ah, they know also about their religion, what, how to deal with their, uh, with their uh, parents, how to deal with their children, how to, how to raise up a good family, and how to manage uh, to bring uh, two meals to their family. They, some of them, they start with one meal, okay? Barely one meal. Now we target, our target was two, two meals. Then now we're targeting any better, inshallah, and so on. 
especially now they built their houses. Most of these people in that area, they live in very bad tents, not even tents. I cannot call it tents, okay? It's يعني, uh, uh, and uh, from wood or something, a collection of, of dust, something, and they live in it, okay? Till they start to work and so on. Many of their, also many of them are widowed. Why? Because these, most of their husbands, they go to the sea. And uh, they go to the deep sea to bring fish, big fishes and so on. And they die. Many of them, they, their husband die. Or because of the bad health situation. So many of them have many diseases because of the water and so on. Like the latest now case, they had a you know, flood and the water stayed and they had now lots of uh, bilharzia and other diseases. The second good thing about the story, about the story, and I see, and this is where I wanted you to make sure now, maybe you cannot do it in your, uh, you know, this, uh, this project, but have something, always think uh, global, act local. And now we require them, this co-op, once they start to make a uh, profit and they make profit from the third month, huh? from the third month, they start to double the amount, then triple the amount. And I think uh, Isa told you also, even Isa, uh, uh, now they just started less, less than two months, three months. I mean, uh, Rwanda, they started to make profit. The technique we are following and the people spirit and so on is helping these people. So the currency is not the money. The currency is the collaborative spirit. So we require these people also to bring their children to education. Most of their children, they don't have, I think Sumaya, she mentioned it, but I think quickly, maybe I'm not sure. And they, most of them, they don't have even ID. Yani they are not counted in the population. Nobody knows how many, yani this fa some families, they have 17 members, but they are not counted. They don't have any ID, nothing. Nobody knows about them. If they die, nobody, uh, like government, they don't know about them, die, uh, live, most of them, 90% of them. Now, uh, with the, uh, a good uh, uh, thing about this project, and we notice in, the, in just two years now, two and a half years right now since we started, we find the spirit of collaboration so high. They used to fight with each other before. Now everybody wants to collaborate. Everybody, and they are coming from different neighborhoods. Now we started to uh, do, move with our copy, even though we did not finish any poverty yet, because this is very poor neighborhood. But we started to move our model to other neighborhoods who started to take our model, not supported by us, by other organization. But we, and this is what we encourage. The more people copy us and copy the good thing of us, because we have also bad things, they, the, bet, the better it is. Now, the, th the fourth point that uh, maybe Sumaya did not mention also, is that this mentored by their own youth. Yani, uh, the family will have uh, one of their family members, maybe he's, he managed to go to high school or intermediate, or he's working now. This guy, he's the one who's supervising another co-op. So there are, there are children is becoming now like mentors for inspiration economy. I think one of them is with you now, uh, I think Amadi or I think he's, he's uh, Adam, Adam. Adam is with Ad, us. Adam, Adam, yeah. We got and our information from him. And, and the last thing, which is, uh, sorry, I'm like, taking a long time. The last thing is that uh, the other businesses that you did not mention, they have, they working in vegetables, which is uh, very difficult for them. Used, they used to go for far away to bring vegetables. They are working with meat business. Uh, they are, uh, uh, they, they, are they are the distributors for even during, you know, when we have festivals like Eid and so, and so on. They are selling uh, phone accessories. They are uh, selling uh, uh, children clothes, uh, uh, printing. They are, uh, they are now going into construction and building business. So what I'm saying here, from just focusing two years in one neighborhood, we managed to bring uh, a, a neighborhood a little bit away from poverty. They were deep in poverty line. Now they are, let's say, can claim, and at least maybe 50% of this neighborhood, which is a huge number, as you can see, the number of the people she, uh, she mentioned, and the number of the members are 370 something. Okay, they, it means there are 370 families. Go oh, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, each, and each family, and each family uh, about uh, not less than 10. So we're talking about 3,000. Well, let's close the, maybe so it's talking. Uh, we are talking about at least 3,000 people are the one which is our beneficiaries from, from this uh, program. Beside, which is interesting, beside, in, uh, uh, as I told you, and now they become uh, like a mentor, some of them, and they start to open their own business. Yani the soap business, 
this is came recently the one you showed the photo of the soap okay they they brought a, they brought paid for a trainer they because now they can afford it. and by the way all of them they run a loan business and any member who want to be, uh, take a loan for uh, educating their children or something they will take the loan from the co-op not anymore they will have debts or something like this so this is really a, a nice uh, story to learn from thank you yes sir uh, so how many cooperatives are there in mauritania there are in this in this neighborhood we're talking about 17 uh, uh, cooperative 17 co-ops only in this neighborhood they are coming more now they are, we are opening three now so there'll be i think 20 or something so uh, the, which is in different businesses huh? yani they don't repeat the business uh, so that we also this uh, like make the neighborhood more you know they sell and buy from each other Hello? Maya, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you with me? Yes, this I'm is the second assignment, which is about inspiration. And we use this as a backdrop to now bring out what inspiration is from a movie, which is the skate girl. Um, the name of the protagonist, protagonist of the movie, Skater Girl, is Perna, which means in India, inspiration. What is inspiration and how can we create it? Inspiration. Um, inspiration, a level where human capacity, challengeability, competency, and capacity is excited or developed with holistic feeling that integrates the power of mind, spirit, heart, and physical contact. Next slide. Uh, this, uh, from this movie, it's explained why it's learned or inspired from a movie, this uh, pr uh, presentation. How is how a progressive society means a productive thinking and creative society. Every individual's dream is an investment for the society and when fulfilled, its fruits can be enjoyed by both individual and society. Empowering a girl child would only yield benefit for family and society, which is in line with the SDG, that's equality for women. Triple uh, I, IE is helping realize the dreams of thousands of people. Example, the Perna in that movie. <laughs> Just like Jessica introduced Perna to a new spot of skating, which not only became her passion, but a way of rise from poverty and patriarchy. Uh, okay, I can give you a little of what's happening here. Here in Nigeria, especially in northern part of Nigeria, uh, whereby they are predominantly Muslim Can't hear you. Hello. If you're poor, hello. Okay, now you are back. Okay, sorry. Okay, then do you now drop do you now draw the attention of seeing the prophet said someone came to the prophet and said he's poor? Then he said, I add another wife, add another wife. At the end of the day, you see a man with four wives, 38 children, and most of them really live in, in, in rents, not even owning their house. Most of the house, uh, the wives have three children, eight children, and everybody have to take care of that child. So with this, at least it's drawing an inspiration and making women, especially girls, realize that they can also actualize their dreams and also reach high in success. Similarity of Triple RE is helping people to dream, create, inspire, and come out to, of generational cause of both mental and financial poverty which is really structured in our societies. Next slide. Triple IE documentary is based from Rwanda, Ghana, India, Mauritania, Nigeria, a million stories. If you compare to one, two, three, we have a million stories in 34 countries. Triple I documentary on cooperatives in Mauritania. This is linking to the other one, which is the problems of hunger, poverty, illiteracy, um, separate homes, which cause trauma and a lot more. Through cooperatives, we have awareness, the rise in awareness and enlightenment. We have a rise in education. From a rise in education, we have a rise in financial stability. So it goes up. 
um, through cooperative where you get loans, where you get help, financial support, you have more of awareness, more of education, more of financial stability. Next slide, please. Nadha in Mauritania, the documentary can be based on the cooperatives under Nadha. Interview of five different people in these cooperatives can be taken. They can be asked how their dreams have changed their involvement in cooperatives. They can be asked about their present aspirations. What do they want to do? What dream do they want to fulfill? And a lot more. For example, this child named Mohammed Somere, she has left school at a very, a dropout actually, left school based to circumstances of poverty. And on the intern on Adama adopted her, that's Muhammad the summary was ranked first in the consequentry exams. The expense was organized from the cooperative, which is jointly. Uh, in one way, you can see it from the angle of inclusion. Um, now she with manufacturing so with manufacture soap funded by international project for inspiration economy and we hope in the future that each project adopts at least two children by one person now we are taking two people out of poverty so like it's a chain that keep growing and growing uh, according to nelson mandela he said overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity it is an act of justice drawing from my background it is a responsibility of everyone as a Muslim to give his quota to his society and to the Muslim debate. Thank you very much. Mashallah, very inspiring. Thank you very much. I, I, I just wanted to comment here also, if I may, uh, Ramli, uh, because yes, I want, don't want to forget something about uh, this Nahda project or the, you know, Dar al-Bayda Mauritania project, because she reminded me which is relevant yes. to the skate, skater gear, uh, mm -hmm. uh, skating gear. The, the, uh, the project, this project, by the way, it have with it uh, beside you, I think you showed this uh, building, uh, Sumaya, which is before uh, the, in the previous uh, presentation. There was a building which is, it had the three, uh, uh, you know, shutter opening for the shops. This is one of the projects that this inspiration economy is doing. So we're trying to spread now what we call it complex of inspiration of economy, any yani buildings, buildings, we are, which are small buildings and behind it, there is activity center. So the co-ops will have their own shops instead of they pay rental and currently now they are in mostly in renting places. So they are yani, taking some of their money for the rental. So we avoid uh, to have the rental by these buildings, like waqf, you know, we in Islam, which is like endowment. The, this is coming from us as inspiration economy. But beside, we are doing um, a multi-activity uh, playground, which is, uh, this is, will be one, unique in that, not only that neighborhood, in total in that area, because that area, all the neighborhoods are, are poor. Anyway, all Mauritania is poor, but I mean, this neighborhood is really poor. Yeah. So this is where we're doing like a greenery, not a greenery grass, because they don't have, uh, uh, I mean, it's like an artificial grass, but because they don't have water, but it is multi-center. So they, it will, there will be theater because maybe I'm not sure if you're going through our uh, Instagram or Facebook, these people, some of them, they used to be uh, drug addicts. And in this neighborhood, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, just to tell you I mean, how much you guys, you can make a difference and uh, inshallah to the, the, the such neighborhoods. These people, when I tell people, uh, uh, I mean, professors from the, or, you know, government officials from the Mauritania, I meet sometimes government officials like this, any you know, for gesture or they invite me when I, they know that I'm there or something like this. Or, or head of university, for example. They tell me, no way you are going there every day. I tell them, no, every day I go. And without policemen, without uh, people escorting you? I said, yes, without people escorting me. And you are staying till night? Nobody stayed there till night. We are afraid. We never go to that area, neighborhood. Why? Because that neighborhood is known to have uh, lots of uh, kidnaps, they want to have lots of uh, drug uh, people and so on. Now, out of uh, some of the youth that we met, which is potential to have a drug and so on, I don't want to go into the detailed history of this because of sensitivity of this issue. But so, these people now, they are the people who made for us one of the most beautiful songs about inspiration economy and about uh, you know what we are doing and so on, which is rap, you know, rap music. Uh, they are did the, the, lots of uh, music that's available on our website anyway. So I'm saying, see that inside each problem, there is a lots of talents, but, but these talents need to be first uh, uh, cultivated through projects, 
We cannot do something, you know, if we did the playground before the projects, it could have been a waste. But now because the community is coming up together, for sure these co-ops will maintain the, even if we've gone from this area, the co-ops will maintain the playground, it's like their own. Not because someone has done it for them, then nobody care about it. Like we found in many things in Africa, people, they do projects, after a while, nobody care about it. So it is like it become like a dirty place or something like this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, so we'll continue with Hadaki now. All right. Um, so my, yeah. Sorry, the, the okay. first, uh, the previous team for Sumaya, which number uh, their team? Sorry. Uh, yeah, so the Sumaya is for team three only. Three of. Yeah. Okay, Jackie. The gastronomic experience of duck dining. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, about us, that's about Daki. Daki is a dining in the duck concept restaurant initiated by Triple IE. This restaurant empowers the visually impaired people and provides an exciting dining experience to people of all walks of life, which is associated by Triple I along with Friendship Society for Blind. Next slide. Okay, location, Rami Grand Hotel and Spa Bahrain. Um, Daki will soon be inaugurated, we're hoping so. Uh, the staff, the staff will be visually impaired belonging to various aspects of blindness spectrum. There are as of now 13 staff members of Daki. One, those who guide, one who will look, um, take the guests to the table, the second one at, at the reception the, for inquiry and reservation. The third one as server and cook for the um, gastronomic experience. The cuisine, how do they make the cuisine? What types of cuisine do they have? Type of cuisine will include both vegetarian and non-vegetarian like chicken, fish, veggies, etc. Um, if there is certain allergies, guests can notify while registration. Okay, I have allergy on this, no, I take tea. Some picky people can choose from what they want. The menu will be a gastronomic surprise, a really surprise. Why darky? Uh, when I first heard of darky, I it's give me, I have a, a, a form of nostalgia. In 2000 and in 2000, year 2000, here in Plateau, it's conflict a conflict that is drawn across a religious divide. And when people were running, we were kids then, we ran, we left our homes. So we have neighbors that are uh, visually impaired and they couldn't make it and they died. So when I saw Darky, I was talking to my team lead and saying, wow, you know, it's touched me and make me, you know, think over a lot of things 20 years ago. These people are really marginalized. These people are excluded in our community. But with this, it's really a fantastic idea that will bring out the spirit of inclusivity. They will feel included. They will feel loved. They will feel cared. And they will feel that they belong to a human society. And they will also feel safe. And dining in the dark without a vision improves all the sense of and elevates gastronomic pleasure. That you would provide an employment opportunity to visually impaired. And to tell you, my grandmother is visually impaired. And she's the only one that went to school. But she, she, she read the Quran completely. <laughs> Her father made sure that she studies. So I'm talking to you out of experience from a family member that they don't have that, that opportunity to see. But if they are given this opportunity, the sense of love, the sense of belongingness, the sense of togetherness, the sense of cohesion will really be improved. The experience of that dining. Experiences stillness and calm, hold conversation beyond physical looks, so you talk from heart to heart, uh, become sensitive to the visually impaired, that means you will really be sensitive of your words, of your actions, because they are around. Uh, appreciate time and company. They really will feel included in your company. 
uh, provides active rest to optical lobe of brain. Yes, which will give you another uh, sense of stress alleviation. Production of melatonin hormone in the body, which can help fight various cancers and also do away with stress. Components, dining. The menu will be a surprise for the guests. The element of adventure will make the experience wholesome. Exhibition, there will be an exhibition regarding various topics and representation of visually different abled people and also music. From the workshops, these are photos, cross, a cross cut photos you can see. Everything has its, has its wonders, even darkness, according to Helen Keller. I'm sorry to wrap up this. I, I really am interested in this and it really excites me to see that um, something for these people is being brought to the table. We no longer talk about ourselves, which is talking about equality. Every human have a right to, to be loved, to, to live in harmony and in safe space. Um, I'm talking from my environment wherever we have conflicts that most of the time the men run, the women run, the vulnerable people are the people facing disabilities, physically challenged people, um, impaired people, uh, women, children, old people. Most of this, these people falls in the line, in the red line, or we call them the red zone of conflict. So whenever we're talking about you being do no harm principle, this is do no harm principle. The do no harm principle is bringing into cognizance those who don't see from your level of seeing, but you can communicate to them from your heart. Thank you. MashaAllah, Samaya, and you inspired us, even though this is our project. But I think I, I can't speak before Dr. Dunia, because she's the one who introduced me to these inspiring people. Okay, and uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, as Dr. Muhammad said. I mean, the way also you present it and how it is linked to you, and there is always a story even behind uh, saying others' stories and how you can link it to touch the heart and touch the mind and touch the soul. So you were very good in uh, presenting this uh, project with, I think, uh, minimum uh, information you know what you knew about uh, because it's in you so there was a lot of information I I know that you tried to contact me to give you some info and I didn't okay uh, I don't know if uh, if uh, Fawaz uh, communicated with you or no or you knew some information uh, and just to add to it it's like this project it's what we call it's for we always do project not for a single group uh, this is our most important message in inspiration economy so it's not like i want to do project that will benefit only people with visual impairments or certain group or certain community uh, always when we think of a project we want to maximize who are going to benefit from it so when i talk about these pro uh, this project darky it's not going to be only good for people with visual impairments who are going to take their chance and prove themselves because we know in other communities and other jobs sometimes they um, uh, some of them were يعني, uh, they had a chance and some they didn't have a chance to show their abilities and uh, maybe this is another way I mean I'm a country in Bahrain that's most of the time people with visual impairment they employ them in telephone operators uh, as they think that this is like the suitable job and you know with the uh, advancements today in all technology so people will need uh, less telephone operators but my message here that we need also in our presentation to show how it does benefits uh, other people when me as a sighted people i go to this darkness i close my eye i go to the this, this different experience i have this a moment between me and myself, uh, the way I think of the things totally changes. When I have this moment that, uh, you know, and it's a state of me guiding people, and I always, since yeah, I was in school, I, I guided people with visual impairments, that they guide me, it's totally different experience. 
So always it is a try when we bring our presentation, uh, we want to show how it will benefit the group, how it will benefit the community, and, and then the benefits in a socioeconomical way. For example, okay, yes, for them, this will be like income for people with visual impairment that they are going to do through this job. But also for a restaurant or a hotel or an environment who's going to work with them, also it's a win-win situation. He's going uh, to be benefited uh, for him. Uh, our target also is, for example, to have like, um, uh, you know, with this all this uh, happening today in the world, we all of us are being busy with these uh, telephone, with communications. Uh, we forget to have times for ourselves, or even to communicate with the person is with us. Uh, I go with my husband. He communicates in his mobile. Uh, and this one, we eat, we go. We remember then at the end of the day that we forget to chat about uh, ourselves. So one of the things that you are going to enter here without a mobile, without anything. So the only way will be is to chat with the others. That's why we are targeting also companies uh, to maybe some to do some of their meetings there. Uh, so they can you can sit with different people. You don't know with who you are sitting, or sometimes you may know it. But then you will have more time to chat with uh, whoever is with you because you will not have something to disturb you even not by looking somewhere else, because sometimes even if I'm not looking at my mobile, I look at the window and I just go and think in something else and I get disturbed. So here, one of the added values, the social effects, uh, the win situation for all um, uh, beneficiaries, I mean, uh, and the stakeholders. So it's uh, so this is the part that I think you need to really focus on. And uh, from a scientific point of view, maybe I want to leave this for Dr. Mohammed because he published already a few papers about this and he uh, talked about a lot about this experience. So I will uh, leave it for him, but well done. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dunya. Mm -hmm. If I may, uh, Ramli also, I want to comment. Again, a very good uh, presentation. Mashallah, so you are very good in presenting. Uh, but you have yeah, but missing information, which is fair. I even though I sent to Ramli, but maybe the uh, time did not help you to read uh, all uh, or the details because this is, um, uh, you know, it's uh, dealing. We are dealing with a complex uh, project. First, in the mo there are there is lots of uh, dining in the dark restaurants around the world. I think maybe even Nigeria, they will do either event or there will be a, a, a restaurant. And you know, it's like available everywhere now. But first of all, usually it is not in, in uh, what we call it utter darkness. You know, utter in English means, I mean, it means complete darkness. It is completely dark. You can't see even your hand. Okay, this is number one. Number two is that never been approached by, this is the uniqueness of this project, never been approached by and the, the people who's working inside totally blind. All of them, I mean, uh, are, are visually impaired, not blind because Dr. Dunya, yani some of them are, let's say, not 100% uh, visual impaired, but they are visual impaired. And yani they have weakness in sight and so on. Uh, this is the, one of the things I wanted to comment on that. The uniqueness also of this is that this is not only dining. This will start with dining, but will go for many, this is a co-op. Again, the concept of co-op now, we are trying to move it from Mauritania, which is one of the poorest countries in the world, to one of the maybe one of the richest, not the rich, richest, but one of the rich countries, in the Gulf countries, which is the Bahrain, okay? Uh, where, uh, again, uh, people, the people, uh, the blind people, uh, they are supported, semi-supported by their community or their society, but there are a lot, most of them are really unemployed or not uh, appreciated for their capacity. So we're trying to link between people who are being dealt with, with sympathetic uh, approaches, either they're given a job, which is they are useless, or they are maybe paid, but they are staying at home. So they are unemployed, you can say. And we're trying to change the mindset of their, even their NGO, their NGO is very rich NGO, I mean, strong NGO, okay? Which is the Friends of the Blind, uh, to tell them, no, you should think that you are having the power more than the, uh, you know, the sighted people or the normal people with all the abilities. Because you can be empathetic driven, you can create empathetic driven uh, projects using your, your disability. So disability, like we say in inspiration economy, is a source of challenge, isn't it? 
I want to turn to be an opportunity because always I tell you, inspiration economy is all about seeing the currency of, uh, of opportunity inside the challenges. So how we utilize this is the, what we want to learn, which is I told you about analogical thinking. And see this, by the way, with lots of disabilities, not only uh, people with disabilities, I mean with uh, other people uh, disabilities. Uh, the other issue that maybe is interesting for you, as Dr. Dunya said, but I want you to go back if you can. So my especially, since you are interested or whoever interested, go and Google my name and say, uh, for example, put pause, you know, say pause and Bohiji. B-A-U-S-E, I mean pause, taking pause at life or uh, uncertainty and Bohiji. You'll find that I have written a lot about this, especially during COVID. The uncertainty of people Okay, it was a chance for them to discover who they are. What is their fate in life? What is their life purposefulness? I think most of us, even in our, who, you know, now we are leaders of your community. And you know, for that, you've been chosen also. Most of us, they don't have a purpose in life. We know that we want to be a doctor, right? But we don't have a purpose. I mentioned this about in our first meeting. So the purpose of this event is to make people at least take really one hour, because it's one and a half hour. One and a half hour in darkness where they might uh, listen to someone who's putting music or uh, listen to someone's story because there will be people who talk about their stories and how they became blind. Many of them, by the way, half of them, they were not born blind. They were, they were uh, people like us, but they lost their sight because of certain disease and so on. So they will tell them that story, how they co-op, how they managed to co-op and so on. So this will be affecting lots of people to take a pause in them for themselves. Say, oh, if this guy is managing to do it, I am the person who's having all the abilities. Why am I complaining about life? Why I have this mental health and I'm going to the coaching, mental health, whatever, blah, blah, which is now a trend for, uh, you know, uh, like imposter syndrome among youth like you. So this is, again, one of the purpose of this project. Last thing, it is a scientific project. It's, uh, it's, uh, we are putting papers. We put already now four papers and we are going to put papers more once the event starts by measuring people reaction and how what they see, what they have benefits from. Because uh, we, sh we should be working like this in life. We should be researchers, we should be project implementers, and we should be publishing about this so that we share our knowledge and minimize the differences uh, uh, of, you know, on, uh, among people uh, in this life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so moving forward, we have team one now. Uh, team one. Uh, hello, I will be presenting from team one. Yes, Pratik, please, please begin. First of all, could you enable the host uh, sharing screen option? So can you please help me with this? So, so you are... So you are mute. Uh, can you please unmute? Okay, now Patrick, I make you co-host also to save time. Yeah, yeah, I can share the screen now. Okay. So we will begin the presentation now. Uh, welcome to the presentation of week two assignment. We are team one project Assam Spirit and we are under the supervision of Sir Paul Kakoti because of whom all of this has been possible. So first, uh, I would like to introduce the project that was assigned to us for scrutiny and surveying. This is a project which, which was introduced and birthed in Ghana, a place which was roughly known for its poverty and uh, lack of income sources. Uh, this project was implemented in mostly rural places of Ghana, targeting various populations, bringing communities together in unity uh, by just looking at the local resources available and making a commodity, a marketable commodity out of it. This project, in turn, helped empower a lot of women, children, adolescents, and so much more. So we are presenting Inspired Legacy, the entire project of it, and how to make it better. Suggestions from our team. Uh, now, before we uh, go into Inspired Legacy, I think it's uh, very 
crucial for us to introduce the context of Ghana because in my team, uh, team one, there's not even one single representation of Ghana. So we had to do an extra research on the entire context and how this entire project was feasible and its impact on it. So if we look to the right, there is a map of Ghana so that you can understand this context better. First of all, Ghana is located in sub-Saharan Africa. And according to UN, most of the countries of high poverty were located in this particular region. In fact, in 1990s, it was declared as one of the poorest nations by the United Nations, which is a very valid and verifiable source. However, there have been drastic changes in the recent past. We can see that the trajectory has started to change. There have been multiple projects implemented so that they could escape their route of poverty and go out into a life filled with possibilities and inspiration. And as we can see in the map, uh, the entire region of Ghana is divided into zonal or regional variances. We have Upper West, Northern, Ashanti, Eastern, Volta, Accra, and so much more. And uh, there is a proverb come saying in Tui Akan language, which goes as Satya Nina Miepe. I uh, looked into it and it roughly translates into all fingers are not equal. And if we look into the regional variances, the socioeconomic condition of the entire project, of the entire location, it's not the same. There are certain regions which enjoy the urban privileges, whereas huge population of poor people are still suffering in regions like the greater Accra. Also, we can see that there is a very high rising um, in the income gap which can be seen. It is on a rising trajectory as the divide between the rich and poor has been increasing. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. In fact, COVID proved it right. Whereas the rich people were very comfortable in their life using social media and everything to share stuff. There were poor people without any access to medicine, healthcare, and even food dying because of the lockdowns. And last but not the least, we, we all know that Ghana is an agrarian economy. Most of the popular products from Ghana are usually cocoa based. Um, they're usually uh, based out of local products that are just there. And very much like India, uh, it is an agrarian economy, which means that most of the economy is uh, fulfilled by the agriculture sector. And this was a rough overview of the context of Ghana. I'm sorry for not covering all of it. And we're moving to Inspired Legacy. So according to our sources, Inspired Legacy is a project uh, which is founded by the on the pillars of Institute of Inspiration Economy Project for socioeconomic empowerment. It has a great emphasis on initiating and investing in projects backed by business models that are innovative, creative, sustainable, self-sustainable, and resilient. Overall, it aims at a better socioeconomic development and condition in all aspects for the youths, children, women, livelihood, and empowering the community overall. Because we know if women are empowered, if they get the opportunity to go out there, explore their dreams, then obviously the entire community, the entire region will be empowered. And that's the thing about inspiration, because you never know whose life might change after that tiny bit of inspiration. And moreover, uh, the, the Inspired Legacy project that we have is achieving its economic and social goals through these five core operational areas, such as uh, business. We have a business and an open market to exchange products and even money in that matter. And this allows countries with lower economic status or socioeconomic status to boost up. One more tactic used is research. Because of research, many people could identify the problems, the underlying factors, the socioeconomic factors behind the problems, and could also pitch in very good uh, solutions for it. And hence, research is necessary. Whenever there is enough literature on a certain kind of topic, enough solutions also take birth. There are many more projects which are coming up because of these researches that have been done in the context of these regions and communities. Up next, there is also education. Uh, in the book, uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, it has been roughly and very vastly mentioned that education is necessary. Consentizing the public is necessary. As long as there is no proper education, there won't be proper development. This is also one of the guiding uh, methods inspired, inspired legacy uses. Up next is capacity building. In order to enable and empower a community, capacity building or skill training is extremely necessary. There could be a lot of abundant raw materials in the nature or in the region as a whole, but until and unless the community people know how to use it, it is of no use. 
And last but not the least, Inspired Legacy uses this method of new projects, launching new projects. And in fact, the very uh, dear project they launched was Inspired Legacy Enterprise. And uh, when we talk about Inspired Legacy Enterprise, uh, let's, let's show the products by Inspired Legacy. The products are based on shea butter, such as winner shea butter hair cream, whipped shea body butter. Uh, and this is how the products look like from the inside. This is just the external packaging of it. We know that organic Shia butter production has been one of the business areas that enterprises use in enhancing socioeconomic development of certain regions in Ghana because the raw material is vastly available and community people already know how to use it. Even before this project was launched, uh, there were studies and information and articles given out that people of that region were already very well adapted with the proper raw materials and how to produce shea butter out of it. What they did not know was how to market it, how to packet it, and how to commodify it. And we can also see that uh, the shea butter products have been vastly introduced in a vast range of products varying from um, quality to quantity, and it has been sold in multiple platforms. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry, I skipped a few slides. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about Shia butter, these are the certain phases that we could track. First is obviously uh, the Shia seeds, which are being collected by the community people, which is then later produced by community women. And it is often a gesture of unity and a gesture of togetherness when a community comes together and produces something. And as we can see, this is the Shia butter that they manufactured with their hands, with their knowledge of what it could do. And these are certain pointers of how ILE, Inspired Legacy Entrepreneurship, inspired the natives and the people worldwide. First of all, it is an efficient model uh, and it has a usage of sustainable and easily available products already known by the community. All it does, all the project does is commodifies the resource and the products. It, it teaches them how to market it and how to sell it in the vaster market already available. Uh, we have already emphasized on this saying that there's usage of various means and modes of sales, such as social media. There is an Instagram page. There is a Facebook page for Inspired Economic. And there the product, uh, the show put out their products, they put out posts uh, for their products and also uh, it enhances their sales. We also uh, came across uh, Gottfried who shared Im immense knowledge with us regarding uh, this entire project because he's the current CEO. And it was also told that uh, they contact local vendors and find uh, ways in which they can sell it locally, not just online. We have also multiple dealers who help them um, pitch in their product and hence it is always growing. This project, as already instigated, has empowered multiple women. It has empowered youths and communities by increasing their financial literacy and providing livelihood options. Just providing livelihood options is it's not the end. It will obviously give them access to money, but until and unless there is financial literacy, one will not know where to invest, one will not know where to spend or not to spend. And hence, this project inspires them. Up next is contributing to various sustainable development uh, we know that this project contributes to obviously SDG one, which is zero poverty. The first aim, the first aim of this project is that they provide uh, sustainable development, um, socioeconomic development routes, and hence the first thing that it does is negates poverty. It gives them a livelihood opportunity, which also addresses SDG eight, which is social de uh, development, uh, sustainable development goal eight, which is surrounding livelihood options and. Um, basically in small scale industries. We have SDG five because this project mostly empowers women and youth. And it's obviously from a gender spectrum, which is vastly still very underdeveloped and not many opportunities come by and hence SDG five. Up next, we also have SDG four, which is education, which comes as a part of financial literacy of educating uh, the population out there and also climate action SDG 13, because this project, unlike the rest, does not harm the environment much. It obviously uses resources that are already available in the environment, but uh, it takes care that it's sustainable and it's very climate friendly. Up next, uh, we also know that because of uh, IIIE's huge network, it could cover a huge uh, clientele from all over the globe. Uh, there were uh, obviously customers from all over the globe, which were from Ghana, Benin, Turkey, India, Bahrain, Belgium, Palestine, and so much more. And it was possible only because of the vast range of network that IIIE has. 
up next uh last but not the least of uh this is not the last <laughs> we just could let's list this there are a few i think we missed out on because of the lack of time we had and how huge the project was there is an openness to collaborate and work with like-minded organization and and, and in individuals we have seen that uh inspired legacy the project uh has collaborated with multiple people and are also willing to work with like-minded organizations who are dedicated towards fighting poverty and empowering people in every manner possible. Uh, and also uh, one, one very important aspect of this entire project is that it has a social for profit approach instead of a capitalistic profit approach. When we look at capitalistic profit approach, it will just it will just give money to a certain region. But when we look at social for profit approach, it empowers an entire community. It pulls an entire community out of poverty, out of hunger and so much more. And hence, this project has inspired many people from Ghana, many people from India, many customers who have bought it from all over the world and for which we praise this project so much. Uh, although this project is very successful and it has empowered so many people, currently there are multiple employees in ILE who earn directly and indirectly through this project, but and they also have a goal of increasing the number of uh, employees to till 300, I think, until the year 2024, which is their goal. And we wish them all the best, all the good luck uh, for achieving this goal. Uh, first uh, input that we have is a website. We have noticed that uh, Inspired Legacy still does not have a website where they can exactly pitch in their ideologies or their products. When we know about successful businesses or properly running businesses, they usually have a website dedicated to products. And in case ILE, um, uh, ILE uh, decides to you know, give out a website where they can present their ideas, how they make it and how the products are, I think the sales will increase drastically. Up next, obviously, is a social media. We know that uh, the world is becoming highly digital. Everyone is online. Everyone is there. There are many social platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, WeChat, Pinterest, WhatsApp, and so much more. And all these platforms are ways for us to get customers. Um, and uh, one more suggestion is with the posts. There should be consistency with the posts so that people know, so that people are updated about the kind of products available, if they're hiring or not, what their ideology is, what the stories of women are who pro provide these products, who make these products, and how these products reach to the market. It will provide a huge plethora of opportunities for everyone to understand Inspired Legacy more and also know more about their products. Up next, we also pitched in this idea of collaborating with influencer. For many people who are in this uh, room might know the name Kabi Lame. Kabi Lame is a person from Senegal who is the most followed person on TikTok and he has a huge social media presence. He's a huge in, uh, influencer. And uh, if you still don't know who he is, he's the one who puts forward his hand and shows easier solutions. If uh, people like these could be contacted for a social reason to promote these um, products, which are being made by local women from really underprivileged backgrounds, I think uh, the reach will incre increase much further. We also had this debate on if this should go online or not, because there are many platforms like Amazon, Flipkart, and so much more that is coming up. Uh, one idea that came up was this product could be pitched in uh, into Amazon, Flipkart, and so on, because they have an international reach. Because people all over the world use Shia butter and Shia butter products because it's very good for skin and it's very good for health. It is also consumable if uh, produced in a certain kind of way. And hence, uh, this was one of the suggestions. Up next was logo. When we talk about logo, every logo has a meaning. Triple uh, IE has a logo. Every project has a logo. And uh, this was discussed in the group that the logo could be a more, a little more interpretative. The logo could be redesigned and uh, updated to suit the current context because when the project started and right now, the situations are completely different. The women who have been working with this project, the youth who have been working with this project have evolved and have reached some kind of a socioeconomic development at this point and hence we feel like there should be an upgradation of the logo and how the entire thing works we also discussed that the packaging the packaging of these products are although very nice and sustainable they are very um 
and basic. And hence, uh, if the packaging could be improved with some kind of budget allocated towards packaging, it could uh, pitch in the product in a very attractive kind of way where people would want to go through the products just by looking at the package, because uh, obviously the appearance matters when it comes to a market. That's how you attract customers. And obviously, for launching the 2.0 of ILE, we, pay, we are pitching in a product expansion, which is obviously there are many products made out of uh, Shia, Shia seeds. But what about uh, the products made out of cocoa beans? We know that Ghana is also very rich, highly rich in cocoa beans, and it is on demand throughout the entire world. People love having coffee. People going to office have coffee. Youngsters have coffee. People in colleges have coffee. And hence, if we could devise a way to even incorporate coffee and coffee beans into the business uh, of um, ILE. I think it could be a very nice way of introducing the version 2.0 of ILE. And that was the first part of our assignment. This is the second part of our assignment, uh, which is obviously, it was focused okay, on- uh, uh, All uh, of Patrick, Patrick, we need to comment on this. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's uh, very important because uh, the idea is not to cover, as I, I was telling to Paul and uh, Ramli, I know they are under pressure, they want to finish, you know, their assignments and so on. But also very important that you learn from, you know, and uh, you learn from also our experience so far. So I'm not sure, uh, Godfrey is there? Yes or no? He's there anyway. I, I think he can hear me because it's very important I, I speak uh, and he hear me. Uh, the, first of all, uh, the, this project, uh, Patrick is, uh, came after we uh, gone to northern of Ghana. Uh, as you mentioned, in the greater Accra and above, and I mean, greater Accra means the, uh, after uh, beyond the capital uh, city, uh, capital city where the rich people are mostly in the capital city. So like, uh, like uh, you know, Delhi and like Bombay, you know, you see most of the people around there, which they are living in this uh, high rise buildings and so on, you see good cars and so on. So there are many, it's an emerging economy country which is you maybe you know, should take care about this point, very important. So they have lots of money around, okay? But this money is uh, for sure is making, as you mentioned exactly, it's making uh, a gap between the rich and the poor. They have also uh, the poorest people uh, in Africa, one of the poorest people, not the, the same as Mauritania and, and Nigeria, but they have poor people that is uh, barely, they don't have even elect electricity, which is in the North. So the more you go to the North, you'll find uh, these people around. Now, uh, the, uh, the country have many uh, potentials, as you mentioned, uh, the coffee, the chocolate, they have the gold, they have, I mean, the potential of, of if, even though it's uh, not a very large country, but the potential of Ghana is one of the largest in, uh, in the whole world, not only. And they are number one in many things. Like for example, they are number one in the Shibatar, they are number one in the, Kaju, they send the Kaju to India, by the way, and India then send, sell, sell it to other uh, of the world because they say, send it as a raw material, the chocolate, or same thing. They, uh, you can imagine there in Ghana, there is no good uh, one manufacturer of chocolate, which is they are the best chocolate. And, uh, they, they are the best chocolate. They're rated number one, their chocolate in the world. I mean, uh, the raw material. The other issue is about uh, now uh, inspired legacy. I don't want you to, if you don't know information, I prefer that you put it in area, a big area than to give it like a credit. And another idea is not to praise each other. The idea is that we learn, even for good Fred to, to learn from this. And one of the things, uh, that area for improvements, beside, uh, you know, that uh, always I say that beneficiaries are not measured properly, because this project was not meant to be a social for a profit, okay? It was meant, and then we found a gap. How we define any project in inspiration economy? First, as I told you, it's the humans, not money. Humans was having a problem, a, a huge poverty, which is shocking after we left the capital. And most majority, as you go north, 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 you'll find uh, many people even, yani barely they are, they are having a house where they can manage to put a meal. The second thing is that there are a lot of abundant resources in the North, which is not used. One of the easiest ones was, besides now the community is poor, one of the easiest ones was the she butter. But as you mentioned, we, they can go, we can go into the coffee business, we can go in the chocolate business. There are many businesses they have there 
in the north uh, that is abundant resources. So much. I mean, the fruits, they have a lot of green area because there are a lot of rivers there in the north anyway. The other issue is that this can bring for us other type of business. If we know how to work like we work in Mauritania, this is what I've been trying to yani, convince Kodifred. Okay, and then we go for eco villages. We work on villages we, so that we can measure properly and we see their life is changing. So far, because we are, he's working with different people to produce his raw material, okay? Okay, they are benefiting because we are minimizing the mediators, the big companies, you know? Because there are big companies that buying the sheep better directly and they are buying it as low price because they are buying it as bulk. While we are buying it in separate places and we're trying to benefit the beneficiaries who can do that. The other issue is that uh, the, the good thing about this, which you did not mention, now this guy, he managed in one year to overcome the obstacles, which is very difficult usually and relevant to the health and safety. See, he managed to get his product approved by the, you know, the uh, health and safety of authority of the, of the country and of uh, Africa. So this gave a given an, a good chance for him now to go and now, even though he have limited equipment and limited experience, and limited place. He don't have a place. He don't have a, any proper place. Now he's going to a proper place. Now, because he made some profit, he managed to go there. Uh, and this may uh, tell us now, he's ready now to work for, to target, as you mentioned, uh, to reach Amazon or similar platforms, uh, which is very important because once he reach Amazon, uh, there will be sustainability in his product sales and so on. Now, I agree with you about the transformation of the packaging. But the most important area for improvement for, uh, for uh, Spire Legacy, improving the communication model, uh, having proper measurement of the main uh, beneficiary. The main beneficiary is not Godfred. The main beneficiary is the is the community. Okay, Godfred, he make more mon money. It doesn't matter for me. It doesn't matter for inspiration economy. What makes more uh, inspiration economy prove that it is a good concept is that we are changing people's life to the positive. So we raise their profit margin. We don't know now this one, we don't know. For that I've been asking him to write a paper. Okay, we don't know now how many of our, in there from our network, these people, how many of them are loyal to us because they've seen they will change their life compared to others. So these are questions that I wish to know when you are doing research about something, you ask these questions. Now we are learning, but and this is the purpose of the, these presentations. Uh, internship program is meant for not to be perfect and present uh, something we say, oh, very nice, you get four out of five. No, no. The idea is that you, uh, in every presentation, you get our comment, we critique ourselves, so that we build a good stories. And one of the things you mentioned, which is I like, and actually each product, and this would be, I've been saying me and Dr. Dunia always for everywhere we go around the world, uh, you can make, differentiate your product, not only by packaging, packaging is important, but you can differentiate your product by the story. If he put now, this product come from this village, this village, these women, they are widowed, they are living in below $2, something like this. This will make the product better uh, sales. And he put photo inside, uh, you know, with the, you know, inside the package of the sheep butter and so on. So this is again, some things that is, uh, and we're giving you techniques, what, how inspiration economy we are looking for when you do inshallah your own, uh, projects with the communities. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for the valuable inputs. Actually, we are all from India and have very little knowledge about Ghana, so we must have skipped a lot of points, which I also mentioned. So extremely sorry, we did not have any field experience so far. But uh, we're moving ahead with the second part of uh, the assignment, which was watching the movie of Skater Girl, relating it to the concept of Triple I and uh, overall. Yeah, so as already one of the teams have covered, I will not go in depth into the story. I'll just give a brief summary of what the story of it was uh, so basically this movie surrounds the life of a woman of a young girl growing up in Rajasthan Rajasthan is one of the highest highly patriarchal places where women are still not allowed to step out of their houses whenever the sun goes down women are still not being able to get themselves educated women are not put into school in fact there's a high rate of female infanticide and this has been verified by sources there is still child marriage being practiced in many places of uh, Rajasthan and one of the prime victims is the women 
in Rajasthan. And hence, uh, this uh, movie is very relevant when it comes to Skater Girl because it focuses the life of a girl named Prena, which obviously means inspiration, who just did not fulfill her dreams of skating, but instead inspired herself, the people around, and also a lot more who are watching the video or movie right now. We know that uh, the condition of Rajasthan is not favorable for sports like skateboard. When we talk about skateboarding, there are areas which we need. There are concrete um, platforms that are needed to be made in order to practice it. And none of it was in that region of Rajasthan until the catalyst Prena arrived. There's a woman named Prena who arrives in this um, place of Rajasthan just to look of how her ancestral place looks like because her father was from this locality. Uh, now she is someone from London with a high powered job at a very creative agency. And she has just come to the village to seek for her father's birthplace and grapple the ancestral past. That was her core. But in the meanwhile, she ends up acting as a catalyst and amplifying the dreams of Prerna and so much more. Meanwhile, if we connect it uh, to the context of Prerna, they are relatively very different because Prerna is a girl who lives in near poverty with her mother, father, and a younger brother. She barely attends school because of uh, many reasons. Uh, she's always on and off to the school and hence has a lot of trouble coming in. Now, if we look at the context, we can see that Prerna is vastly underdeveloped. She comes from a margin of poverty, whereas the catalyst, um, Whereas the catalyst, Jessica, uh, is uh, someone from a very privileged background who has a proper socioeconomic backup and is just there to maybe see for it, maybe transform. Uh, we could compare these contexts of Prerna to communities which are underdeveloped and the context of Jessica, a uh, catalyst uh, to the context of IIIE who enable and empower people and in fact inspire generations to come with projects as such. Also, uh, when we talk about dreams and inspirations, obviously, uh, uh, Jessica and her friend definitely amplified skateboarding. They introduced skateboarding to the kids in Rajasthan, and they were also very amused by looking at a skateboard because they, they've never seen it before. They start practicing, they start having fun, but then there is resistance from a traditional point of view. Uh, as I already mentioned, Rajasthan has a very traditional society even now. As long as there is uh, no resistance or revolution, they are fine. But as long as uh, there is something threatening the patriarchal system, there is something which is threatening to the vaster social uh, structure that they have um, laid down, they will be threatened. And hence, there were also slogans of signboards saying no skateboarding in the region. But then also the kids came up with interesting ideas of protesting it in a very peaceful way, saying that skateboarding is not a crime, that they can skateboard as much as they want to because uh, it does not harm anyone. Moreover, uh, the movie separates in a section uh, where Jessica attempts to get funding for the skate park. They plan to make a skate park and they also successfully make a skate park by the end of the movie. And Prena, on the other hand, she attempts to carve out a space in her life where she can skateboard. In fact, she was uh, forced to hide her skateboard at times at home. And we all know how painful it is when you have to hide something from the people you love so much because they might hamper your dreams or your inspirations. There are many inter interesting and intersectional issues on display, such as obviously tradition and resistance and how soci society sometimes acts as a barrier towards change. Uh, there is also display of change and possibility in the eyes of Prerna and many other kids who learn how to skateboard from these foreign people. But uh, the focus is actually and really on all the social pressure that a girl faces when she is poor. Rich girls also have a lot of problems but when you're a girl from a poor community and from a lower caste here in India, your life, become, life becomes 10 times harder. To fulfill your dream, you need to work 10 times harder and maybe even more. And this is how, why the movie is so relevant because it shows uh, the inspiration of one girl, which later translates into the inspiration of many people, many kids from the region who keep on fulfilling their dreams. And by the end of the movie, it's also a very uh, positive outcome that they have successfully made a pit where they can uh, do skating. Up next is our idea and theme and storyboard for documentary. Uh, the theme will be that it will be focused on the missing community of Dihing Kalgar, Hibohakwa. And uh, we chose this because uh, it is the place where the projects surrounding bamboos and sustainable development happen uh, because of IIIE. 
The story will focus on the narrative of a growing adolescent from the community who is really good in football and also studies. You might have known uh, from the context of India that Northeast gets highlighted only when they win medals in Commonwealth, only when they achieve something. And if we could empower ed young adults uh, to fulfill their dreams in sports and studies, this could help empower the entire region overall. And also the narrative will showcase uh, the transformation of uh, the lifestyle of uh, the main character before and after the project. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, uh, with keeping in mind uh, that there is a special focus on the milestones and progress in life, specifically education and sports with regards to the main protagonist of the story. And uh, here is uh, the storyline that we're gonna follow. The start of the project and how it is helping the people in the region will be showcased first. Uh, the socioeconomic status of a location completely changes once an inspirational project with a very good business uh, and sustainable model uh, has been installed. And hence, uh, the storyline would start with showing the people how different was it before and after the project and how it's changing. Because of livelihood and, and access to income source, there will obviously be a transformation in the standard of living, and this will be showed in the documentary because uh, some amount of pay raise will help people pursue and even access education, health, and so many more facilities which they cannot when they are poor. Uh, and in the storyline, one day, obviously, after the father is employed, the father of the main character is employed through the project of the Triple IE that has been installed. He brings a football home with some books, which is like encyclopedia, comics, and novels. And later, we explore that the protagonist, the child of the father, he studies the books, goes to school because of the economy upliftment that they have. He plays football in uh, the leisure time. And meanwhile, he gets better at everything. He gets good grades. He maintains his sports and also uses uses his time wisely. The protagonist goes on fulfilling his dreams, achieving multiple goals, and anything, anytime and every time he does something uh, great, his father gives him a trophy made of bamboo because uh, the projects are surrounding bamboos and his father is a bamboo instrument or an object maker. And these products are being marketed through this um, project. Uh, we'll also focus on the storyline, how uh, 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 they live a pretty fine life with many ups and downs. Obviously, with a growing socioeconomic and development trajectory, there will be many ups, but we should not forget that there could be some downs as well, because we never know what the wheel will turn to. There will be emphasis on showcasing that this family is not capitalistically rich, but they're relatively richer than what they used to be. Uh, this family is uh, finding ways to earn income and get some money, some livelihood, and they try to provide their son, the protagonist, with everything they can with their capacity, with their capability, which makes this story even more interesting. And uh, time lapse and fast forward, we get to know that he goes on to become a very well-known scholar. He uh, does education, maybe PhD, MA, something of that sort, and also uh, is known for his great talent in football. Uh, the documentary will end uh, uh, with a scene where the protagonist does something for the village after all the knowledge and the empowerment he has received because one project started and inspired his life and just threw him off into some other trajectory. Uh, he opens up an educational institute in the region. And this is completely fictional. We are not following a particular timeline. And we are pitching this idea in because this is a possibility which uh, the project holds. This is an inspiration which the pro project holds. Uh, he will open up an educational institute that helps cater and facilitate young children eager to learn. And it also magnifies their talents, such as singing, dancing, acting. Along with academic bloom, they will also need to sharpen their talents if they want to gra have a grasp of the vaster social reality. Because every Everything sounds good on paper, that it seems good on paper, but in reality, things could be different. So one must be a jack of all trades and also the king of one. And uh, this kind of uh, supplementary project that evolves because of some other project that happened in the past, it ends up empowering not only that person, but the entire region and generations to come. And last but not the least, in the final scene, his father in his old age gives him a final trophy made of bamboo for all that he has done and achieved for the village. And this is the connection we are drawing from the project of Triple I. They focus on making bamboo objects. And every time that kid has done uh, good in his studies or won a medal in sports, 
which the father would give him a trophy made out of bamboo every single time uh, his child does something good. And uh, in, even in his old days, when he's in his 80s and 90s, uh, his son did something really good for the entire society, which is open up an educational institute, which helps amplify the uh, concept of inspiration and also the economy. And hence, uh, it is a very relevant way, according to us, to end the documentary. And with this, we have come to an end of the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, even though it's a little bit fast for me, which I need to reread it again, but it's nice. I mean, it's a, you are trying uh, really professional. I wish that my son, Jasim, he managed to attend, but he's uh, flying today, I think, to Saudi Arabia, but he promised me that he will go through the presentation when we send him to support us in evaluating. So, uh, because he's a, a producer, so he, uh, these things for him is interesting also. Okay, thanks, thanks, Patrick. Sir, I, I had uh, sir, one kind of feedback which because of the experience with the internship and uh, one thing that we have noticed and which is completely true is that our team consists of people only from Assam, which is not learning, uh, giving us enough opportunities to do peer learning from people from Ghana, Sudan, and we do not know much about their context. In fact, while making this, we were at a very vast disadvantage because we did not know anything about the field. Everything we did was from maybe data and whatever it is. And data might not be correct at times because the tools they use, we don't know if they're verified or not. And hence, I, I request you if you could also organize sessions where we could learn about people from, you know, the friends from other countries as well, because I do not know them. We might have int been introduced in the first classes, but I don't know how they think like exactly. I don't know where they come from, what their place is like, if, if anything of that sort could be introduced to this this is we'll leave it for paul i think he will uh, arrange maybe for sure a session to, that every one of you talk about your life and what you're doing and what is challenges you have and so on i'm sure that paul he have this in planning paul you are there uh, around right paul <clears throat> yes sir i'm adding this point actually yeah. and also we have plans regarding this yeah uh, well thank you so much pratik and team one for your efforts so now we have team two uh, uh, of the Godfrey Ghana. And uh, from team two, Farhin Mehdi is going to represent. Farhin, are you there? Yeah. Hi, Paul. Uh, hello, sir. A very warm good evening to one and all. Actually, Paul, at first, I'm not going to present. It will be Chandrali. She will be presenting. Okay. So I will present, but uh, it will be her first because there are two topics we have divided as a team. All right. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Chandrali. Chandrali? Chandrali, are you there? Just give me a second. I'm sound, sound, sound. Uh, we can't hear you, Chandrali. Uh, generally you have a problem with the mic can you ch make sure generally can you talk now talk again can we hear you no generally He's there, but uh, Paul, the, the mic, mic problem from her side. All right, that's fine. Can you present before Chandrali? Yeah, so we'll go ahead with, yeah, sure. Also, uh, that's why we'll go ahead first with topic two, then we'll go with topic one as well. Now your team, Farhan, your team number? So we're team two. We're team two. Uh, so can you make me the co-host? I don't know, I have a shirt. Okay. Yes, go ahead. I hope my screen is being shared. So I'm going to share the screen and my teammate Avantika and uh, Salma, they are going to guide you for this. So Avantika and Salma, you just go ahead. Uh, 
Avantika, can you see? Yes, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible now. Just let me know when you guys want me to. Yeah, sure. Uh, a very good evening to each and everyone. My name is Avantika from Team 4, and I would like to represent, sorry, Team 2, and I would I'd like to represent Team 2. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Next slide. <clears throat> About the movie, as uh, team four, three, and one has already represented. So, I'd like to start about the movie. Peter World is the coming of age story about confidence, courage, and the profound impact of raising your own soul. Set in the remote village, Kurampur in Udaipur, Rajasthan, India, the team follows Prena and local team living in a life bound by tradition and duty to the parents. But when London Great Advertising executive Jessica arrives in the village to learn more about the late father's childhood, Prena and the other local children are introduced to an exciting new adventure of skateboarding thanks to Jessica and her old friend Eric. He cruises into town on his skateboard. The kids become infatuated with the sports, getting to the village, disrupting everything and everyone around them. Determined to empower and encourage their new, new town creation, Jessica set out on an uphill battle to build the kids their own skateboard. Leaving Prena with a difficult choice between conforming to society's expectations of a living or out. With a dream of competing in the national In the end, we see parents decide to go to the state for competition against the parents' wish. Running from her own marriage and breaking the stereotypes of gender prizes, winning the competition and getting free from the board set by. Okay, next slide, please. What the movie's fortress is, a movie tells us about the social evil present in the rural society of India. As you can see, it tells us about the deep rooted gender inequalities and the caste system present in India's rural part. Like uh, we see an example of this in the movie when uh, Perna ends up not going to school even though uh, she wants to. And instead she had to help her mother in household chores and go to the farm and seem to be concerned with her studies because of the caste system. When lower class uh, children are not allowed to play with the higher class children, reflecting the social disparity and the artificial boundaries between two contemporary groups. It is also uh, tells us about the economic differences between both facts, which is very evident and well depicted in this uh, scene uh, from the movie where when in the shop, Perna wanted to buy a book for school, but Perna couldn't afford to buy that book as it was of the strategy. Meanwhile, Jessica is uh, like buying bottles of water for the same prices, which is very inefficient term for her. The movie also uh, explicitly shows that how girls and women and uh, children in a real area where uh, Their voices and dreams are often first, and then do not. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. Like it's a and religious belief. The difference don't allow her to enter religious life. Okay, next slide. Can you hear me? The triple IP inspiration that we can take from this movie is like inspiration takeaway we can get from this movie is that the escape. What is the ray of light from the underprivileged children of Kempu village in Odaipur? 
it was a skateboarding that changed the life of the children especially prena who did, did not have any ambitions in her life to ever embark on such an unorthodox journey the skateboard park that is constructed for the movie shooting was that to donate to the village okay uh, um, work um, for um, the communities of the uh, rural areas uh, just a, just a minute um, amentika or farhan uh, please uh, now uh, just exit and enter into this link see i sent you now a link for everyone since we are staying a longer time i am just uh, uh, booking for you another two hours did you see the li the link i sent yes, yes sir God? yeah so please everyone yes. just uh, uh, go to this link okay uh, I'm, i'm now closing this one uh, because now we are, this is our only reserved for two hours i didn't know that we'll gonna take longer time okay yes sir